Okay, next I want to switch from talking about attributes uh, for our primitives and modifiers to talking about creating grooms using uh, guides. So, so far we've just been growing our hair straight out um, and just using the, the primitive attributes and the modifiers to control the shape. But as you might imagine, I don't get a full, a, a, really a lot of like artistic control over the direction the hair is going, right? So this can only really stick out straight or I can kind of wave it around, but I can't like make, for instance, the sideburn areas like pull back this way or get like bangs that kind of shape this way or have her hair back here kind of flow down the back of her head. So in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to use um, guides. And so to activate guides, I'd either have to create a new description, which I'm not gonna do in this case. I could create a new description and choose. We'll look at the, here, let's go ahead and select that, create description. You could do groomables, or sorry, splines. And then instead of using attributes, we could do placing and shaping guides. But instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna switch my current description from using attributes to using guides. So this isn't something that's like foolproof. There is a chance that doing something like this can, you know, cause something to break or you'd have to redo something. Um, we can't do that with the fur type short hair groom. So groomable splines, we can only really do this between attributes and guides. Um, so I'm just, but we'll do it for this case because it seems pretty stable so far the way I've been doing it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and come over to the primitives tab, go from controlling using attributes to guides. And now we'll see that we now have those guide um, options down here. And then um, I'm gonna be able to place guides now. So to do that, I'm first gonna hide my hair. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start placing guides. Um, I'm gonna kind of do this like a little sporadically. Um, I'm not really gonna follow any rhyme or reason right now. Um, so you just have to get like a couple of guides. I think it won't it won't start working until I have I think three or four guides. And now when you start previewing it, when I add a new guide, right, it's going to grow hair from that region. Um, so be aware, like even though I'm technically am trying to grow hair from over here, if I don't have a local guide, it won't grow any hair. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and close that. So uh, by default, the length of our hair is going to be the length of our the local guide. Um, right now it's a little bit longer. That's because my length is set to um, 3.5 and I also have a random value on it. If I set that down to one, right, the hair is gonna stay more or less the length of that uh, guide. And let's go ahead and I'll turn off these modifiers for now. Let's pull these all the way down. Okay, cool, got none on. So all those hairs are generally the size of the guides. If I take a guide, you can select them by clicking and dragging. And it's going to take preference over the guides over geometry so if you're having to click and drag them and they're on top of the model it will grab the guides and not the model so that's kind of nice um, and so what you do is you can select the guide and then you right click on it and you go into guide control point mode and you can actually control the shapes of these guides right so you can make them longer right you can stretch them out i have soft select on so it's kind of going a little weird um, i can you know wiggle this around as much as i want right you can see this right now it has pretty low resolution We'll go back to object mode, and then when I click on preview, you can see now those hairs right there are taking on that shape. Um, so uh, to, in order to manipulate these guides, we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on um, with the hair that's actually being generated, but let's take, keep looking at shaping the guides. So I manually set the size of this guide. You know, I can stretch it, and you'll even see like the hair is getting longer there too, because it's, again, based on the, the guide that's local to it. It'll take on that length. If I made this longer, the, these hairs are going to get longer. And then it, it would just multiply whatever I have here on top of that. So if I set it to three, right, um, it's just multiplying one of my, my guide length by three. Okay, let me set that back to one. Okay, so I'm going to hide those hairs again. Um, so what we can do is we can change the shape of our guides down here. So if I use set length, I can customize the length of it. So one is going to be the default length. I can go ahead and set length to, let's say, like, 10, right? Um, I can do the same thing with these ones, right? Let's say I'm gonna set this one, let's do set length to uh, six, right? Um, I can set it below one, set length to 0.4, right? And so now when I show this hair, all those hairs are gonna be different sized, okay? Um, I can rebuild it, so you can see I don't really have a whole lot of guide control points to work with, right? This Bezier curve it's making only has four points. So what I can do is I can click on rebuild and set a resolution to it. So let's say, let's do like 10, okay? And now when I come in here and go to those guide control points, I have a lot more points. So you can edit this use just going into like move mode with um, guide control points. I think you should be able to press T, no, okay. Um, and then you can turn on soft select, right? And use 
It's a little hard because in this version, it's not showing that preview. Uh, I'd have to change it in the tool settings. But anyways, what I would prefer doing nowadays is selecting the guide and clicking on this button right here. So you'll see it says sculpt guides. Be careful this one, convert primitives to polygons. You don't want that. So don't ever press that one. I'm just gonna press delete. Oh, I guess I can't remove it. Uh, so then I'm gonna go ahead and click on sculpt guides. And now you can see I have this kind of art brush that's gonna click and drag on it. And I can hold B and left click and drag to get like soft selection on it. Um, and so I can go ahead and shape that. So let's say I wanted to grab these hairs and I kind of wanted to like have her hair flow from her bang air, bangs area like right there and then start to kind of tuck behind her ear. So let's go and pull there so there's no penetration. There we go. And we'll do something like that. Okay. Um, and then it, I can do multiple at once, right? So I'm press G on my keyboard to reselect the late, last tool I had just to make this look a little bit faster. So in this case, I'm gonna have these hairs start to kind of flow backwards. I'll do the same thing for this one. You can see that one hair that got stuck in the head I might have to fix. Her hair is gonna look really weird. Um, but anyways, I just wanna show how this works. Um, and then let's grab that, that one that's stuck in the head and pull it back out. All right, so now when I go ahead and render it, you can see those hairs are now flowing backwards. So this would be the beginning I would take to start shaping my hair and pushing them into this particular direction, right? This one back here, I would, you know, kind of let it flow down this way so that my hairs would start to flow down the neck. And as you can see, obviously I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to how I'm, you know, these are working together, but um, there's this interpolation going on between our guides, right? So um, any hairs that are right next to the guide itself are gonna follow one-to-one -one with the guide. So any hairs that are growing from right here, assuming there's nothing else that's affecting them like modifiers, um, it's gonna follow that guide. And then as you move away from where a guide is, it's gonna start blending that particular hair with another area or with another guide. So you can see between, like this guy's just stick, sticking straight out right there. You can see those hairs that are near are sticking straight out. And in between this curved one and that straight one, they're kind of doing a blend of both. So uh, just keep that in mind is that by default, these guides are going to, those areas that don't have guides are gonna to try to interpret what you want the hair to look like based on the surrounding guides. So to fix this or to have more control of this, we, we really just need more guides. So usually if you're looking at a groom uh, that's more sophisticated using um, long hair splines like this or guides, control guides, then you'd have like a ton of guides. And the more guides you have, the more uh, intricate and uh, cleanly defined shapes you can get. Here's the example I wanted to bring up from uh, Sefki Ibrahim. Um, so recommend you guys check him out. His stuff is really, really good. Um, so on this project, you can see how many long hair guides he had to create to get this really interesting hairstyle that has a very specific look to it, right? You can't just throw like a, like a handful of guides on there and expect it to look really good, right? And so this final result, which is you know really amazing, um, has a lot of character to it, a lot of interesting and varied pieces. And so he has all these different guides to help control that. So just keep that in mind that when you're making uh, like a hair groom using control guides that you're going to have to spend some time um, crafting those shapes using multiple guides. So here I went ahead and added some more guides. We'll add some more over here in a second, but each one of these I just went ahead and took uh, this insert guide or add guide tool and just left click and drag. If you click it near enough to an existing guide, you'll notice it copies the shape, right? So you can see that adds a shape, which is pretty cool. Um, if it doesn't do that, so let me go ahead and control Z that. Add one over here. You can see this one, you know, I'll have to set the length and then I'm gonna have to sculpt it. Then I have to add more divisions to it. So that gets a little tedious. What I can do is I can select a guide, right click it and then say copy guide shape. And I can select that as other guide, right click and say paste guide shape. And you'll see it's gonna essentially take on all the attributes of that other one. It's so far away that that shape's a little weird, but this is pretty easy to just sculpt and fix, right? and just I can re-sculpt it and reshape it over here so that it has the shape that I want. Um, and so a lot of this is just, you know, like adding more and more guides. Usually you can save a lot of work by just adding guides, copying and pasting their shape, and then re-sculpting them to get a more interesting um, shape that you want out of them. Something you wanna be aware of when it comes to working with these guides is when you do that right click, if you're over a model, depends on the version you're working in, I think in some other settings in Maya, but a lot of times you'll see that this, you know, 
it defaults to, even though selecting it defaults to the guides, right-clicking defaults to the model underneath if there's a model or some other object, which can be really annoying. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just make sure I can toggle the geometry so I'm not like maybe the visibility of it. Um, right now I have it set to toggling the templating of it. So if I just set the, you know, both of these guys to zero, then I can come in here and I can um, easily, more easily select these, but that can get kind of a tedious. So having it, I just made a little Mel script that toggles the templating, right? You can see when I click on it, it toggles the templating of that layer. I could do the same thing with toggling the visibility of that layer. Um, so uh, some other things that we want to keep in mind is that um, when we're doing this, now that we've added guides, we'll notice that inside that uh, Xgen folder in the outliner, you'll now see that we have guides. And so we can, um, you know, delete these guides. We can rename, I probably shouldn't rename them. But you can delete guides when you add new ones, they come in here. Um, I can talk about it briefly later, but we can also uh, convert curves to guides. So I can draw out curves or do some other creation techniques to create these hair guides. It's like for instance, if I'm making it in ZBrush, I could use fiber mesh to generate a bunch of curves and then I can generate those curves into guides for XGen. Um, there's a lot of really cool things you can do to kind of sync XGen with other programs. Um, and that's just one way. But I just wanted to point that out while we're here. So I have all these guides. Um, I'm probably, I usually don't do this very often, but uh, since I have these guides already, I'm gonna go ahead and select these ones here, including that one. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this uh, mirror one. So we're gonna mirror across the x-axis. And so now you can see I've mirrored them. It's a great easy way to just go ahead and start working with, uh, um, you know, getting a, a lot of hairs already set up on this side that are gonna work well. Um, so let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So it's looking kind of okay. It's looking better, like the hairs are actually kind of going the ways that I want them to. The problem is again, I'm having that interpolation issue, right? So in this case, I'm trying to make this like kind of like a big chunk of bangs right here. Um, and I might change the shape up a little bit, um, but uh, I don't have any distinction there, right? So I'm not getting any distinction right there. If this is the bangs area, and then there's gonna be separate clumping of hairs that are kind of going back here. So in order to do that, we have a couple options available to us. One of those is um, messing around with the region map. And also that's why this hair is kind of coming into the face right here is because the hair that's growing from right here is interpolating from this guide over here to here. And so the average of that is gonna be in the face, which is obviously not something I want. So to fix this, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to use the region map. So using the region map, uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna toggle the, um, you know, visibility of my uh, model and turn, bring back my scalp because it's gonna be a map that I'm gonna paint. So I'll come back into XGen and I'm gonna go ahead and create this map. And I'm gonna make sure that it's going to be a high enough resolution. So I'm gonna set it to 20 and create. And let's go ahead and hide this hair. So uh, the way the region map works is any hairs that grow in a section of color uh, they are going to be uh, following only the guides that happen to be in that color. So right now, a hair that's growing from right here is looking at these guides, these guides, and honestly, a lot of the other guides. Um, and it's kind of like trying to find the average. But if I paint, let's go ahead and do a really simple one. I'm gonna go ahead and do a hard brush. I'm gonna switch to like a basic um, primary color. And I'm gonna come in here and paint blue, right? So if I paint blue right here, um, and then I go ahead and click save on that region map. You'll now see that uh, it's not working yet. That's just because I have to turn the region map mask onto one. Right now it's off by default. Now you can see all those hairs that were growing out of that blue region that I painted are only following the guides that happen to be in the blue region. So it's not looking over here because these hairs are in the red region. Um, something you can do is you can preview um, that region mask by um, grabbing, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a variable, so I'm gonna grab this mask variable that I have, or this map variable that I have, because I'm gonna reuse it. I come over here to the guide color, uh, or I can even do the primitive color, let's open that up. I'm gonna comment this line out, and I'm gonna drop in that variable I just copied for loading in a map. The problem is it's not, I don't want the mask, the paint mask, or the uh, density mask, I'm gonna, I want the region mask. So I think that one's just called description slash region, click apply. And now you can see those hairs are colored based on that color region I set. I can do the same thing on the guide colors, right? I'm gonna comment this out. Um, and then I can just add that same thing there, slash region, click apply. And so you can see my guides that I place are now gonna be colored based on the region. If I wanna undo that, I could just reset that, um, or I can just 
delete those lines added and just go ahead and um, uncomment the thing I commented out. And I'll come back over here, just delete that and say apply, accept. Okay, so now it's back to default. Um, so uh, for instance, for doing a part in the hair, uh, really quickly, I'm gonna make an edit to this so that I'm gonna get a better kind of shape on the middle of the hair because they got kind of all just fly or fall through the middle. Uh, let me go ahead and do that really quick. So I went ahead and added more hairs along the middle, but I want a natural part here that's not really quite working because of that interpolation issue. Those hairs are going a little wild. So I'll come back to that region map. Um, we'll go ahead and paint it. Let's hide the uh, hair. And let's go ahead and I want to toggle the visibility of my model so I can look through. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just use this blue and kind of find where that part's going to be right here. And we'll just go ahead and paint this whole side blue for now. Um, and we can break this up into more colors. It doesn't have to be like a single solid color. Um, and right around here, I might kind of blur that a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the opacity down and I'm just gonna kind of blend this a little bit and then let's go ahead and set it back to red. I'll just do the primary red right there. Let's do a soft uh, kind of setup. And I'm just gonna kind of blend that in just so back here it's a little bit more organic. Okay, it might not work because I'm actually making new colors to be completely honest. So I might have to control Z that, um, but let's go ahead and take a look at that, right? So there might be some areas back there, but what should happen, and I need to save my file, is now I should have a part. So obviously, like I said, there's like a issue back here because <laughs> I shouldn't have done the way I was doing it. I was kind of making purple. Um, so let's go ahead and hide those hairs for a second. I'm just gonna switch this back to um, hard value, and then we're just gonna do black. And then I'll just switch it back to blue and then do this area. This back area back here, I'm gonna kind of undo the part in a second, but we'll go ahead and um, uh, save that again. And preview those hairs. So now we, we see we have a natural part. Back here, I kind of wanna lose the part a little bit. So I'm actually gonna create a mat, uh, mask for my region map. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and let's hide, I'm gonna hide the guides for now. You can just click on this button right here to hide your guides. Um, and I'm gonna come back here to my region map and I'm gonna create a mask for it. So we'll create a mask, region mask. Um, let's go ahead and hide that hair again. Um, and back here, I'm gonna kind of lose that um, region map. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to black and we're gonna set this to a low opacity and we're just gonna kind of build it up right there. And then when I go ahead and save that, now you can see I'm starting to lose that region map um, effect back there. Okay, last thing I wanna cover with guides is I set up this quick version of my groom where I did a mohawk instead. Looks like this. Um, and in this case, what I'm using is, uh, we've previously been using region maps, right? So a region map is where we can define a grouping of hair uh, and which guides are influencing it. So if I painted this area blue and the rest of the area is red, this little blue area where hair grows is only gonna look at this guide and not look at the other guides, right? We actually have something very similar to the region map in our clumping maps. So our clumping maps are defining areas of hairs that group together and follow a guide. And let me go ahead and hide that again. Um, so when we ever set up these maps here, right, um, whenever we generate, right, we're generating something a lot like these guides where um, we're defining an area and then it creates a map that is defining a group of hairs or a space where hairs are grown and then the guide that they follow. So when you generate, you're going to randomly generate these um, guides across your surface, and it's gonna be based on the density. So we did that previously, but we can also set it up by guide. So if you actually wanted each of your guides to actually have like a chunk of hair to follow it, then you can do that. And you can see if I hide my actual guides, when I generate my clumping guides, it's actually, when I press the guide button, those clumping guides are showing up where my actual grooming uh, splines are. So that's pretty cool in this case, because I wanted to have a mohawk with like distinct chunks or spikes to it. And so when I click save, right, each of those, um, uh, each of those control guides has a particular clump associated with it. And if I pull off the smaller clump, you can see it looks something like that, right? Um, so we have these clumpings of hair. So I uh, just wanted to kind of show that as a last little hidden feature that you could do with um, guides and clumping.